So what we've looked at up to now is FCFS, round robin, and with both long and short quanta. And then we've looked at shortest job first, and then we looked at the preemptive version, which is the shortest remaining time first. The next thing we're going to look at is priority-based scheduling. Uh, this is very simple. You associate a number uh, with each process. Uh, smaller in number means typically higher priority. In Linux, this is can be thought of as a niceness level. So with every process that you uh, create from the shell, you can specify a minus nice parameter. Uh, the short, smaller the nice parameter, um, the uh, higher the priority. And this can again be both preemptive or non-preemptive. Uh, shortest job first and shortest remaining time first can be really thought of as special cases of priority, where you're prioritizing based on the length of the task. Shorter jobs get higher priority. Um, the big problem with this is starvation, uh, similar to those, uh, the SJF and SRTF. Uh, low priority processes may never execute. Maybe this is the desired behavior sometimes. A technique that's orthogonal to the scheduling algorithm itself is the number of queues used in the system, so the multi-level queues. So till now, we've assumed that all the tasks uh, line up in the same queue, but this is really suboptimal. If you, what do you want, if you really think about it, you have different kinds of processes in the system. Some are foreground, example interactive processes, and some are background, that is these are batch processes that are going to run for a long time, it doesn't really matter what the response time is. So with foreground processes, response time is paramount. With background on any you know, average wait time is paramount. You want really short wait time. And with background processes, what's really paramount is overall throughput. So the question is, why, why don't you prioritize for these? So if you knew which ones are interactive and which ones are background, which you possibly know ahead of time, why can't you apply different uh, queuing algorithms? So what you really have is two different queues. Uh, you have one uh, where all the interactive processes go, uh, they get round robin scheduling, another one which where the, all the background processes go, and they get FCFS scheduling. And how you schedule between the different queues, because at any given instant you got to pick which queue you want to run, uh, you fix the priority for that. Possibly serve all the background, foreground ones before the background ones. So here's an, uh, um, an example of a multi-level queue where I've kind of classified into five. You've got system processes, interactive ones. System ones is obviously at the higher priority because you don't want the system to slow down because of a user level application. Uh, you've got interactive editing processes where you care about the process only when you have keystrokes, then you have batch, and then possibly you have some, something on a student. And so if you look at it, systems have the highest priority. This one, um, the priority is higher up the, if, the, if the queue is high, higher up in the figure. Uh, if you, you can also have feedback with the uh, multi-level queues, um, and you can dynamically adjust each process's priority. For example, initially it could be interactive, and it has the highest priority queue. Uh, if the quantum expires, the, which means you already served it once, then you drop down one level. And if it blocks for I/O before the quantum expires, that is not used up its full quota, then you give it a higher priority, uh, push it up one level. Right. So in this case, for example, you start off with a quantum of 8, um, which means that you have really low wait times. Uh, you immediately get the uh, CPU. And then if you finish running there, then you increase the quantum to 16. And then finally, you move it to FCFS uh, if you, you know, finish that quantum as well. And if you don't finish a quantum, that means you've not used your full quota, even though the CPU was given to you, in which case you move up back or you increase the priority by reducing the quantum. And so if you have long-running uh, compute jobs, they ultimately will get demoted to a lower priority. And if you look at the overall scheduling details, um, so this one approximates uh, shortest remaining time first. CPU-bound processes are punished. Uh, Short-running I.O.-bound processes are awarded. And the best part is that you don't need to predict uh, the job runtime. You're relying only on the past. You're relying on the fact that if I gave you some CPU time and you got to use it, then you must be a CPU bound process. And if you are a CPU bound process, I want to assign uh, you lower priority. Right? And if you have, if you don't get to use the CPU when I gave it to you, 
it possibly means that you had some IO uh, operation going on. Uh, and in such cases, you probably shot running on the CPU, and so I want to award you. User action can, the challenge with this is that the user action can file the intent of the OS designer. So if you put a bunch of meaningless I.O., for example, like a printf, um, then what's going to happen is that the system would as just assume that you're interactive and keep you at the highest priority level. Right? Even though that you don't really need the I.O., it's still like going to have a higher priority because CPU uh, just assumes that you have, you need to be interactive. Finally, uh, the, an algorithm that's non-deterministic that we want is probabilistic, uh, is lottery-based scheduling. Uh, you give each process some number of lottery tickets. On each time slice, you randomly pick a winning ticket. On average, uh, the CPU time that you get is proportional to the number of tickets you give to each process. The big question is how do you assign tickets? Uh, how many tickets do you give to each process? Uh, to approximate shortest remaining time first, the short running jobs obviously get more tickets. It's because the more tickets you have, the higher probability you're going to get picked. And if to avoid starvation, every process gets at least a minimum number of tickets. So if you have long jobs, uh, they have at least as many tickets as the shortest short job. So the well, short jobs can get more tickets, long running jobs also have some tickets, and it's possible that they may get picked. And here's an example of this um, scheduling policy, uh, and I would encourage you to go take a look at the slides for this. So to summarize, um, scheduling is the job of selecting a waiting process from a ready queue and allocating the CPU to it. Uh, it's important because, as we saw, based on the policy, based on what the system characteristics are, you could uh, land up with dramatic different wait times and response times. The two metrics we care about are wait time and response time. Uh, in the segment. Obviously, the other one that you could possibly care about is just throughput, uh, which is you know, CPU utilization, so on and so forth. Uh, we looked at quite a few of these policies. The first one we looked at was FCFS. Pros is it's simple. Cons is it short jobs can get stuck behind long ones. Then we looked at round robin. Pros, better for short jobs, poor performance when jobs have the same length. Sh then we looked at short job first and shortest remaining time first, which is the preemptive version. Shortest job first is a non-preemptive version. Um, this one, these ones run the job with the least amount of computation left. Uh, pros, it's optimal. It's probably optimal. So the average response time is always the lowest amongst any of the scheduling policies. Cons, it's hard to predict the future. It's unfair in some ways because you could have a long-running job uh, queued up behind a short-running job. And then we looked at priority-based scheduling. Uh, each process is assigned a fixed priority. We looked at multi-level queue scheduling, where you have different priorities within the queues based on whether they are interactive or batch-based. We looked at feedback-based ones, which approximate shortest remaining time first by essentially promoting or demoting processes based on whether they get to use the quanta that they were given in the past or not. And then finally, we looked at lottery scheduling, which is a more probabilistic technique, where you give each process a number of tickets, short job tasks to get more tickets. You reserve minimum number of tickets for every job so that you don't have starvation of the long jobs themselves. And this finishes the schedule.